Finally, one of our guys said, you come over here. And the amazing thing, as we, as we looked at two of those German soldiers came out like this, very slowly moving across no man's land, their weapons raised part way down. They put their weapon on the ground, pulled their pistol out, laid it on the ground, and started coming forward. They said, send an officer. I'm going to tell you, all the rest of us, we were certain that something was going to happen. We were right there. We were rifles ready. I'm telling you, we were ready to go to war. But our captain said, don't fire, don't fire, cease fire. The captain came out of the trench, walked across, shook their hand. We heard them talking for a few moments. The next thing I know, our captain came back smoking a German cigar. And he said, hey, he said, they've called a truce. We're going to join them in the truce. We're honoring the Prince of Peace, the baby Jesus who was born. This is Christmas Eve. We're going to have a truce. For the next 24 hours, there's not going to be any firing. The sentries were supposed to stay where they were, and everybody was to be on guard. But for the next 24 hours, it was amazing as we watched, little groups of men began to come forward off the German lines. I noticed some of the English started going out there and well as well, and we met in the middle. And we shook hands with one another. It was amazing. That was a Christmas miracle. Amen. I mean, just a few hours before, we had been trying to kill one another. We hated each other. We were enemies. It wasn't long before we built a bonfire. Oh, the different colors of uniform were very apparent in that chill Christmas Eve night as we looked at one another. We got to know each other. Not many of us in the English side could speak German, but I was amazed how many could speak English. And I began to speak with the man who spoke English. And he, he came to me and he said uh, that he used to work in England before the war. In fact, he was a waiter at a restaurant that I knew, the restaurant Cecile. And it, he, said, he said, perhaps I waited on you. I said, perhaps you did. And he told me, man, listen, he said, there's a girl there in London that I fell in love with, and we were going to get married, but the wars interrupted that. I see, he said, I'd love to go see her again. I said, don't worry, chap. We'll beat you by Easter, and then you can come marry her. <laughs> he laughed at that. And then he said, I want to give you a, a little postcard if you could mail it, and maybe it will get to her. I said, sure. I met another man that was a porter at Victoria Station, and it was amazing. He, 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 he showed me pictures of his family in Munich, and he had a sister that was quite attractive, his eldest sister. And I said, wow, she's very beautiful. He said, I would like for you to meet her. I said, you would? He said, yes, he gave me his address in Munich. How amazing is that? So we sat there, and even those who couldn't converse, we began to trade things. We traded our cigarettes for their cigars. We traded our tea for their coffee. We traded our corned beef for their sausage. And, and I mean, it was a wonderful time. We even pulled out some patches that we traded with one another. Buttons came off of jackets and people were trading. I personally traded a leather belt for a beautiful jackknife. What a great souvenir that's going to be of this day. And we traded newspapers as well. They read our newspapers, and I began to tell them what our newspapers said, and they laughed. They said, are you kidding me? France and Russia, they're almost defeated. It was obvious that somebody was lying to these people. And finally came to the conclusion they would believe their newspapers, and we'd believe ours. Well, we enjoyed that time, and standing around the fire and visiting, and sang a few more carols, and we ended that evening by singing that old carol, I'm not kidding you, old Lang Syne, and it was early in the morning now, and we decided we'd better head for bed for just a little while. So we went back and we went to bed. We decided that night that one of the first things that we would do in the morning was to bury the dead that were in no man's land. I got up early in the morning, the sun was barely up on Christmas Day, December 25th, 1914, we climbed out of our trenches and there were dead everywhere. 
But the amazing thing was that rather than each one of us dig our own hole to bury the dead, and I'll tell you, it was almost an absolute silence. We dug our holes. We dug a hole together. The British and the Germans dug a hole together and laid our fallen, our dead, in those holes, British beside German. That day we took off our hats. Words were said as we honored the fallen. I didn't understand what they said, and I'm sure they didn't understand what we said. That we had all lost brothers, and we understood what was going on that day. It's a little quiet after that. But the most amazing part was once the dead were buried, the sun was out. It was early morning. We were drinking our coffee, enjoying our time together. When someone from the German side brought out a football, that was one of the greatest games you've ever seen. I'd like to show it to you today. Here's our football game. My name is Jim. My name is Otto. Pleased to meet you, Otto. Freut mich. How are you? I uh, good. Uh, good. Um, good. And do? Um, not so bad. <laughs> Rose, she's called. It's schön, um, schön. tell you we beat him we weren't taking score but I know we must have beat him huh oh yeah it was a great day finally the day ended the Sun began to sink we went back to our trenches we knew that the truce was just hours away from ending many of my comrades in arm lay down to get some sleep but I couldn't help but think about what had happened that day I realized there were some things that I felt different about. The first thing was that for many weeks, I had carried with me anger, hatred, bitterness. I was so angry, I was so mad. I realized that those men over there, they were men just like us. Yeah. They had families, they had friends, they had children, they had cousins. And I had hated them. And for the first time, that peace, that peace that started when the carol started, that very peace came into my heart. And I, I knew that I didn't want to live without that peace any longer. I knew that I couldn't stand even one more minute to lose that peace that I was feeling. So that night I got out my Bible, the one my mom had given me. And I opened it up and I, I, I began to read it. I found the Christmas story in the book of Luke and I read it. And I continued to read and finally somehow I stumbled on a passage. I want to read it for you. It's Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. It says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Justified by faith. To be made just as if I'd never sinned by faith. Yes. That's right. I began to think about my sin. I began to think of all the things in my life I had done wrong and I began to consider those things and, and I realized that I wasn't at peace with God. 
I was angry at God. I'd cursed God because of the mud. I'd cursed him because of the cold. I'd cursed him because of the rain. I'd cursed him because of the stupid war. I'd cursed I just. I was so angry at God. It was only days before. I had raised my fist at God and said, Why, God, am I here? And that anger filled me, but somehow the peace had come. But I realized that in order to maintain that peace, I had to find peace with God. And so there, right in that trench on December the 25th, 1914, I got down on my knees with my Bible in front of me. My comrades were all sleeping. And I asked Jesus to come in and to give me that peace. And I began to confess my sins to him. I began to call out to the Lord. I began to call out to him. And I'm telling you that as amazing as it sounds, that day, that Christmas day, the Prince of Peace walked into my heart. He walked into my life. Oh, that day I surrendered. Not to the Germans. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had to go back to war. The generals made sure of that. Once the photos leaked out and got into the press, believe me, we all got to chew it out like you've never seen. We were forced to go back to war. We, there would be no more fraternizing with the enemy, okay? There would be no more truces. There would be no more things like that. It was war as usual. For a few days, we shot over one another's head, but once, in the, once a bullet bounced off these sandbags, we had to get back to the business of war. But there was something different inside of me. There was the peace of God. Because you can't have the peace of God until you've made peace with God. Well, that day as well, I found two little pieces of paper in my Bible. My aunt had went to Chicago where they were singing a new Christian hymn. They're in here somewhere. It's the hymn, I Surrender All. And so that day I got those pieces of paper out. I began to sing those verses as best as I could remember. And that day I surrendered. I surrendered my anger. I surrendered my frustration. I surrendered my bitterness. I surrendered my sinful life for the life that God had for me. Will you stand with me today? We're going to sing this song to the Lord. I surrender.